Welcome to our presentation, The Zombifying Mark of the Beast. My name is Katina Michael. I'm a professor in the School for the Future of Innovation in Society at Arizona State University. And I'm joined today by my colleague and husband, Dr. M.G. Michael, formerly of the University of Wollongong, who's a philosopher, historian, and theologian. Revelation 13, 16 to 18. He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads, and that no one may buy or sell, except one who has the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. His number is 666. Six, six. In Revelation chapter 13, 16 to 18, St. John, the seer of Patmos, describes a time in which people will have an existential decision to make on whether or not to adopt the mark of the beast. This mark would be a requirement for one to be allowed to engage in commerce, that is buying and selling. Denying the mark would lead to suffering persecution by way of exclusion from the marketplace, including diverse discrimination. Now, the mark is a parody on Jesus Christ's seal of baptism. The seal is evidence of belonging to the community of believers, the communio sanctorum, both the living and the dead. And the mark contains a number, 666, and is not necessarily physical or even visible. The vital aspect of this mark, literally in Greek, charagma means a mark that is engraved, etched, branded, cut, or imprinted, is that it would be required for any kind of economic transaction. And so our analogy to zombification of the marked is a total enslavement of the will and conscience. These individuals, according to the author of the revelation, will be unable to revert back to their former selves, thus being zombified. 